Yahoo Finance republished a Housing Wire reverse mortgage daily column by Chris Clow, and it examines how reverse mortgages may be a viable solution for older couples that are facing a silver or gray divorce. Gray divorce is a term used for those who end their marriage at age 50 or older. Success Magazine's column, How to Recover Financially from a Gray Divorce, notes that those in their 50s are likely still earning an income, usually their highest income in their 50s. And because of this, their divorces look different than those who are in retirement and on a fixed income. While divorces are unfortunate, they're also increasingly common amongst older Americans. According to a 2022 study, which was published in the journals of gerontology, the rate of divorce among those that are age 50 and older has doubled since 1990, and it has tripled for those who are 65 and older. With most couples that are facing a divorce owning a home, it's not surprising that complications often arise when dividing up assets. Now, housing is just one such issue, but a new column that is published by Success Magazine suggests that reverse mortgages could actually play an assistive role. Nancy Hetrick, a certified divorce financial analyst and also the founder and CEO of Smarter Divorce Solutions, over time, Hetrick began to examine how a reverse mortgage could be employed for separating couples who meet the loan's qualification standards. It's just a really wonderful piece of flexibility and creativity for these couples, she told the outlet. Also adding that the partner leaving the marital home could explore a Heckin for Purchase or H for P loan by using the equity they have gained. But in staying in the home later in life, it may also prove to be an uneven fit considering the natural limitations that come with aging. Maybe this is actually an opportunity for both of them to kind of reimagine the last phase of their lives, she said. Earlier this year, Finance of America, or FOA, Vice President of Retirement Strategy, Steve Resch, told Housing Wire's Reverse Mortgage Daily that many of his colleagues in the financial planning space are increasingly dealing with the issue of gray divorce. Another opportunity is the H4P, Resch said in May. Planners often don't realize that they can use that, and many of us are now dealing with gray divorce scenarios. Another scenario where this really comes in handy is relocation. Last week, Normal as Vice President of Communications, Daryl Hicks, shared Fidelity Investments estimates of how much a 65-year-old retiree can expect to spend on health care and medical expenses throughout their retirement. The number may be such that some homeowners who never, ever considered a reverse mortgage may be rethinking their choice. Earlier this month, Fidelity Investments shared their 23rd annual retiree health care estimate, and it reveals that 65-year-old retirees this year can expect to spend an average of $165,000 in health care and medical expenses throughout retirement. Fidelity Research finds that the average American estimates cost will be about $75,000, less than half of Fidelity's calculation. Healthcare costs are among the most unpredictable expenses, especially when it comes to retirement planning, said Robert Kennedy, Senior Vice President of Workplace Consulting at Fidelity. As we approach the fall open enrollment period for healthcare benefits, it's a great time for Americans to be proactive with their financial planning efforts. The best time to plan for those healthcare costs is long before they occur. So what is the breakdown of the average retiree's medical and health care expenditures? Fidelity found that 47% is spent on deductibles, co-payments, and co-insurance for doctor and hospital visits. On average, 43% of health costs are for Medicare Part B and D premiums, and 10% is for out-of-pocket prescription drug costs. How can older Americans best prepare? The first step is to examine leveraging the flexibility and the benefits of a health savings account. HSA plans provide a tax advantage means to save for both short and long-term health care expenses. The next step is to enroll in Medicare, a task that's easier said than done for most. In fact, 55% say it will be difficult to enroll in Medicare coverage and half expect to feel overwhelmed or confused when selecting their plan, notes Fidelity. The good news is that helpful advice is easy to access. Whether enrolling in Medicare for the first time or looking for coverage that better meets their needs in open enrollment, Fidelity Medicare Services was introduced to provide clarity around Medicare with complimentary advice for Americans to help them support their health and financial goals. As of July 22, 2024, Fidelity's impartial guidance is available to residents of all 50 U.S. states in Washington, D.C. 
Fidelity Medicare Services offers the following resources for Americans that are approaching retirement and for those who are already retired. Inquiries can be made both online or in person with a Fidelity representative. On August 8th, Equitable announced a new survey of over 1,000 consumers, which reveals the pressing concerns and the financial trends of Americans. Equitable survey revealed that nearly half of consumers, 47%, believe it is unrealistic for them to retire before or at the traditional retirement age of 65. Instead, they expect to retire nearly a decade later at an average age of 74. The top three challenges or obstacles cited were increasing living expenses by 68%, fear of not having enough money saved, 66%, and a lack of guaranteed income for retirement, 39%. This reality contrasts sharply with the 18% of respondents who want to continue working past the age of 65. Today's world is full of uncertainty and inflation continues to make everything more expensive. This is having a profound impact on Americans' retirement confidence, causing many to feel they will need to work well beyond age 65 to save enough, not only out of choice, but rather necessity, said Nick Lane, president of Equitable. Equitable survey also found that if given the choice, nearly two-thirds of consumers, 64%, would prefer a consistent and guaranteed paycheck in retirement versus having to determine just how much to withdraw from their retirement nest egg to make their money last throughout their lifetime. And that sentiment, surprisingly, was generally consistent across all age groups, with millennials expressing the most interest at 70%, followed by Gen X at 65, Gen Z at 62%, and Baby Boomers at 59%. With that said, it's noteworthy that Equitable Survey also found that Baby Boomers, those closest to retirement, are the least interested in the security of a steady paycheck in retirement compared to younger workers, such as Millennials. This is perhaps... Video after graphic. With that said, it is noteworthy that Equitable Survey found that baby boomers, those that are closest to retirement today, are the least interested in the security of a steady paycheck in retirement when compared to younger workers, such as millennials. And that can perhaps be attributed to the fact that most baby boomers, given their stage of life, are more likely to already have access to reliable sources of retirement income, such as payments from Social Security or a traditional pension. Whereas younger generations are facing more uncertainty in these areas and will likely need greater support to ensure they don't outlive their savings in the future. Equitable survey also revealed that nearly 6 in 10, 57% of Americans, view the current economic conditions in our nation as highly volatile, reinforcing the need for strategies that offer some level of protection for their investments in addition to a steady stream of income. This has resulted in a recent boom in demand by U.S. consumers for financial solutions like annuities, which can provide guaranteed income in retirement. And that wraps up another episode of Heckam World Weekly. Thank you so much for joining us. We do have an audio edition of this podcast, which you can find on Apple Music, Spotify, on Podbean, and of course at HeckamWorld.com. We have a YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. That way you can watch all of our episodes, this show, and others. Thanks again for joining us, and be sure to return next week for the nation's only weekly podcast, bringing reverse mortgage-related news to you, the mortgage professional.